In this video, we're going to use Excel to create a graphical depiction of a quantitative variable. Okay, there are several different uh, graphical depictions that we can use for quantitative variables. Uh, the Ogilvy chart, uh, another one is a box plot or box and whisker plot that describe the central tendency and the, and the dispersion of a quantitative data set. Uh, but in our case, what we're going to do is just a basic uh, histogram. Okay, uh, histogram again gives us a measure of central tendency and dispersion, widely used in industry, widely used by a lot of folks. Um, so that that just makes uh, the um, it's us using Excel to create one of these uh, a, a no-brainer. Okay, uh, certainly Excel is a ubiquitous tool in industry, uh, so that's why we're going to use Excel again. Excel is not the greatest. Uh, software package to be doing this kind of activity in the first place. Uh, certainly statistical software packages are produce a little bit nicer, actually in, in many cases much nicer uh, plots, um, but again the ubiquitous nature of Excel and in industry uh, makes this uh, a natural uh, software package to discuss. Okay, So let's say with our data set we have 95 observations of metal cylinders and let's say we measure the outside diameter of each of those 95 metal cylinders and we get that measurement in millimeters okay so we've got 95 observations here and let's say we want to produce a histogram of this because this is a quantitative variable okay you would measure diameter on a continuous number line as opposed to a qualitative variable which would often be uh, categorical in nature or perhaps ordinal in nature and so what do we need to uh, produce one of these histograms? We need the minimum value in the data set and the maximum value to find ultimately the range. Okay, We're going to need the number of bins uh, to produce in the histogram. Therefore, we're going to need the bin width. Okay, So let's take a look at the minimum value. The minimum value in a data set is found using the min function. Okay, so we're going to find the min of a range of cells. Okay, in this case, here is our range of cells. Okay, so the smallest observation out of those 95 is 49.64 millimeters. Let's also use a similar kind of function, the max function, to find the maximum observation here. Okay, we see that the maximum observation is 50.44 millimeters. Therefore, the range is going to be the max minus the min, and that's 0.8. Okay, so the range of the data set is 0.8 millimeters. Now let's find the number of bins. A lot of different ways to find how many bins you should have in your histogram. Uh, I suggest using, uh, as a rule of thumb or a heuristic, uh, the square root of sample size. Okay, so the square root of 95. If we get something that's a non-integer, we're going to need an integer here for the number of bins, and I suggest rounding up. Okay, so we use the ceiling function or the round up function, uh, let's say, to, uh, to no digits here. Okay, so we're going to have 10 bins. Okay, rounding up in helps us ensure that we have enough bins to cover uh, the between the min and the max. Okay, so the bin width here is going to be the range divided by the number of bins. Okay, so we've got a uh, a bin width of 0.08. So now, let's uh, let's start producing our bins. Okay, so we've got uh, forty-nine point six four. That's our minimum value. To that, we're going to add point oh eight. And we want to 
want to hold this cell constant. So let's uh, put dollar sign in front of the E unit 6. That helps us hold that value constant. So we can drag down across uh, all of our bins. Okay, so that's the second bin, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth bin. Okay. So there we have it. We've got now uh, ten different bins here. Okay. And we can now produce a histogram based on those 10 bins. So what we're going to do is use the data toolkit. Okay, It's not added in here. So we're going to need to go add in this uh, data toolkit. So let's go over to file and we'll go to options. Okay, We need to go to the add-ins. Manage Excel add-ins, and we need the Analysis Tool Pack. Okay, inside the Analysis Tool Pack uh, are several different tools that would be commonly used uh, in Excel, uh, including the histogram function. Okay, so with the histogram function. We've got an input range. Okay, that's just these values right here. Our 95 observations. Okay. And now we've got a bin range. So we're going to specify the bin range based on uh, what we want to see. And that would be these observations right here. Okay, the upper bounds on the bin range. Uh, if we didn't specify a bin range, uh, Excel would just do that for us automatically. Yeah, it probably would not use the square root of sample size heuristic. Okay, uh, you would use something uh, slightly different. Probably it wouldn't uh, be too much different than what we're going to end up seeing. Okay, once we hit OK, the outputs are going to open up in a new worksheet. Okay, so once we do this we see that there are five observations um, below uh, 49.72. There are uh, 11 observations uh, below 49.8 to 49.72 inclusive of 49.72 and so on. Okay, So what happens here is technically in this histogram uh, 50.44 the upper bound on the bin width is not included. Okay, the upper bound on the bin width is not included in that bin uh, as Excel um, performs this calculation. Okay, it says that 50.44. Remember that was our maximum observation. It says that that would be in a different cell above, lying uh, above uh, our range. And it call it refers to that anything lying above our range as a more uh, category. Okay. So we have a couple of options. One would be to <coughs> look at our um, ten different uh, bins and add one more, this more bin. Or we could just recognize that technically this that one observation would lie. Okay, we could kind of cheat the system a little bit um, and put that one observation in this bin because it is equal to exactly 50.44, the largest observation. Okay, so in here we have 95 total observations, and there is a frequency with each one of these. Okay, another way to think about this uh, for uh, depicting this in a histogram is to say that uh, that lower bin represents 49.64 49.64 up to the value 49.72 okay likewise this is 49.72 up to 49.8 here we have 
uh, 49.8 up to 49.88, and so on. Okay, just for graphical depiction purposes, um, just to let us know uh, which observations are in which bins. Okay. Naturally, th if this was on a, a number line, a continuous number line, uh, we wouldn't have to do something like this. But since Excel, uh, since we have to use a, uh, a bar graph in Excel to do this for us, uh, we might want to be a little bit more specific. Okay, so now we have our bins, we have 10 of those, and let's create a bar graph of these observations. So we'll go to the bar graph option, and uh, Excel pick that out for us automatically. Again, we don't want it this more uh, category here. So let's go to the, let's right click on this thing, select data, and let's remove that last bin. And of course, I don't like this label, so you can see that's not very descriptive. And so now we have somewhat of a histogram. Okay, again, these columns really should be touching. Okay, just to indicate that this is on a continuous number line. Uh, we don't have that option in Excel. A lot of statistical software packages are uh, MATLAB and so on. Uh, would produce a, a more uh, elegant looking histogram. Um, but that's not what we have here. Again, this is just a very simple way to do this. So we have the ranges for each one of these, and then we have the frequency of those ranges uh, for each range of the continuous uh, quantitative variable. Okay, And like before, you have some different options on coloring, uh, counting observations and so on. Okay, so this is a this is a way to produce a uh, a quick histogram using Excel. Uh, it's using the uh, well. First off, how I like to do this is specify the bins. Okay, the upper bound on each bin. Then using the uh, data analysis toolkit using the histogram function and essentially all the histogram function does is it goes goes through all the observations and counts which one should be in each bin okay and then it spits that out in a different uh, worksheet and then based on this count then you can create a bar graph that will be a mock-up of a histogram 